Hello, hello. Good morning, good morning, fellow teachers. Selamat pagi, selamat pagi. Good morning. Welcome to the expert sharing session number five. It's the fifth one and it's the last one. And hopefully we are bringing more to you in the future. But today we're going to focus on the fifth session all together. Good morning, Cikgu Jun, Teacher Jun. Good morning, Teacher Saguntala. Yes. How's it going? How's it going? Right. So does it feel like it's uh, it's, we are like a class, right? We are in one class and today we are greeting all the classmates. Maybe I'm the class monitor, right? Waiting for the teachers to come in. Ah, uh, good morning, fellow classmates. Today we are gonna ah uh, oh teacher Chun say school holiday, yeah. But we are still in class today to learn some knowledge. Ah, uh, it's like a holiday program lah for us. Yes, good morning, fellow classmates. It's Wen Ping here, and then today I'll be moderating as well, and then I'll be inviting our speaker, our guest speaker for today. So hopefully you guys are ex. Very excited and ready for today's session. Okay, so first of all, I want to make sure all the teachers are in the Telegram group. Are in the Telegram group already for uh, those, especially for those who just joined in, uh, not long ago. For those who just joined in or just heard about our program, right? Just heard about our expert sharing session. Make sure you are in our Telegram group. Okay, how to make sure you are in the Telegram group? Very simple. Click this link and then join in the group. Now, ah, uh, want you want to do a simple exercise? Just take a selfie or take a, a a picture of your surrounding or your computer. What is your situation there in your classroom, in your virtual classroom? So let's take a picture and send to the Telegram group, shall we? Take a picture, send the Telegram group. Score A Fab Castell expert sharing session. So Ami Gamba. Ambil gambar uh, Satu gambar selfie ke Ataupun satu gambar surrounding Ah, uh, Satu gambar surrounding uh, Macam mana di situasi Macam mana situasi di sana Sebab kita tak boleh bersama muka uh, We can't really take a group wifi uh, uh, Except for the very last one In the photo shoot lah in the, in the screenshot But we want to know What's your situation there What's your computer like And then how's, uh, how's uh, uh, are, are you like preparing notes and stuff Right. Okay. Uh, I think uh, our speaker also sent me a photo. Uh, maybe. Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Happier, you can join our Telegram group as well to to share the uh, pictures as well. Right. Okay. So teachers, feel free to send in the uh, photo. Ah. Uh, yes. Uh, good morning, uh, Teacher Sasi. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for your kind words. And good morning, Teacher Parimala. And so, if let's say you know other teachers are about to join you're supposed to join this session yes tell them it's gonna start is uh, starting soon huh? it's starting soon right now yep uh good morning teacher luhan yes uh teacher don't need to make up i uh, can trade away snap a picture of like a uh, selfie or take snap a picture of your surrounding of with your computer with your notes right ready ah uh, then stand into the telegram group yeah Okay, without further ado, I would like to thank, uh, take this opportunity again to thank Fab Castell for organizing this expert sharing session for all the teachers. Today is the fifth session, right? We are come down to the fifth session and hopefully teachers are able to join in all the sessions and benefit from it. Right, awesome, awesome. So we have uh, a few teachers sending in already. Yeah, let me share the Telegram group. For teachers uh, to see what's happening there. Yeah, there you go. Wow, my face is so big. Uh, time to, you know, uh, slim down a bit. <laughs> oh, wow. Multitasking, uh, teacher Adi Wisa. Maybe with uh, Astro in front of you and then with our session going on as well. Right, so give, feel free to give likes, give love to the, to the, to the pictures that teachers sent in. And later on, we will have some activities as well. Okay, so teachers, without further ado, are you ready to kickstart today's session? Are you ready to kickstart today's session? If you are ready, if you are ready, comment down, ready. Yes, teacher Rini, always ready. Uh, I always uh, see you here in, uh, in the Zoom room, always in a ready kind of mode. 
Very awesome. Cikgu Zun, Cikgu Parimala, Cikgu Anna Punam. Yes, very awesome. Right now, let's kickstart the introduction and then I'll invite our guest speaker today be on board. Yes, there you go. So welcome once again, everyone, to the Creative Learning by Skoi Fabu Castell. And today's is the expert sharing session exclusively for you. So remember to join our Telegram group, right? Remember to join our Telegram group and we be sure uh, because all the links, all the important links will be given in Telegram group. Semua link yang penting akan dibergikan dalam Telegram group ini. And get ready with your notes, uh, notebooks, with your uh, stationaries and then with your phone as well. Very, very awesome. Later on, we will. Uh, and then, uh, of course, your laptop, your computer. Later on, we will do some activities with your computer as well. Right, so in this journey, we have five education expert sharing session from all the, uh, the first one, Anjit uh, Zaid session, visualizing learning to simplify, right? Uh, Miss Valeria session all the way from Miami, United States. And uh, it's all about sketch noting. Mr. Luis, uh, all about YouTube, how to, how to, how to add, create video contents, how to hack through uh, different learning codes using different learning codes. And then we have uh, Dr. Savita sessions. Right, the communication cues. Do remember the I I learning cues, the learning styles, or all, all and all, right? So in this journey, we have go through four different sessions already. So now, now they just comment down below which session uh, you already participated in or already watched the recording. Is it this is your number five or this is your number four? This is your number three. Comment down below using the numbers. Is this uh, your number five session? Your fifth session? Awesome, awesome. Uh, teacher Abdul Raza, Chika, Chiku Sassi, Chiku Tanusri. Yes, uh, Chiku Rodzi, the fourth one. Yes, uh, later on you can re watch the recording again. Make sure you complete all five sessions. Yes, Chiku Saliza three, Aziza four. Yes, Chiku Go five. Yes, awesome. Yes, so today, uh, in this journey itself, we already uh, covered from 6 August until 3rd September all the way to today's uh, very, very awesome, uh, this journey. And then very, very awesome spirit teachers that join from the first day until the end, right? So of course, there are uh, some teachers who will watch the recording as well. Uh, we will wait, uh, all everyone complete together. And then later on, we will share with the link, share a link to you, you fill in, and then you can get your certificate of participation. So without further ado, I would like to invite, I would like to introduce first, introduce first today's guest speaker. It's a very, very special guest speaker and then one person that I admire very, very much. So today we have Mr. Javier Montel all the way from Texas, United States. He's a top 100 world leaders and visionaries in education and licensed practitioner of NLP. Today's session is all about how to make learning more visual, immersive and interactive and Mr. Javier will guide you uh, some of the steps that you will able to follow and apply with your students. So Mr. Javier is an international STEAM education projects expert. He's presenter at Space Center Houston since 2011. He's a teacher science advisor in the bringing the universe to America's classrooms. It's an initiative in partnership with NASA and he received the Top 100 Visionaries in Education Award by the Global Forum for Education and Learning. Here are some of the next sneak peek of the conferences, seminars, and trainings that Mr. Javier has conducted with teachers, with students. And some of it uh, is a, a space, really, space education related, STEAM education related. Uh, even if the Apollo mission with the late uh, Jerry Woodfield, our very, very uh, honored Jerry Woodfield, uh, the system engineer of Apollo 11 and 13, alongside with uh, Mr. Jerry Woodfield and also other uh, trainers as well. Right? So there are this uh, Sparks event as well in the implementation strategy of Latin America, very beneficial program in uh, for the youth, aviation youth mentoring program. Also, there's this international STEM outreach with the project Mexican Aerospace Academy with 500 students in Tlaxcala. So uh, one of these feature in this uh, student's computer, later on, Mr. Javier will show to the students, will show to the teachers over here as well, how to utilize this feature in this, uh, in this uh, actually in the monitor of these students. 
And also, Mr. Havia presented the drones in classroom during the SEC 2018 conference. So you see uh, Mr. Havia is uh, holding the drones in front of the Houston Space Center. So not to forget, uh, we actually met Mr. Havia in the uh, very, very our own program called Edu Galaxy, a space education program created for the youth and for eight different countries students. So Mr. Heavy has led us the effort to merge and also invite other speakers as well to achieve this benefits, to achieve this session with all the, uh, it's a weekly coaching session with all the students over there about space education, about how to become an astronaut, about how to use different, different technology or software to create their own projects. That is a very, very, uh, very, very useful and very, very beneficial programs for all the students, all the way from Mexico, Thailand, Malaysia, Philippines, so on and so forth. So we always call uh, uh, Mr. Javier, Captain Javier. He's one of our honorable uh, captain in the sessions. And then he used to teach these uh, students about how to use certain software, certain tools and resources to create their own 3D or virtual projects online. So is it awesome? Is it sounds awesome? If let's say all this sounds awesome, you can type in awesome, right? And then without further ado, if let's say you are ready, Ah uh, yes, uh, teacher Abdul Raza thinks it's awesome. Without, if let's say without further ado, if you want to invite Mr. Javier to be on board and kickstart the session, you can type in score A. Type in score A in the Zoom chat, and I'll invite Mr. Javier to be on board. Yes, in right this moment. Yes, thank you so much for your feedback. Continue this hundred percent participation in the Zoom chat, and later on, teacher Javier, uh, Mr. Javier will also engage with you in this moment. So without further ado, let us welcome Mr. Javier Montel all the way from Texas, United States to join us in this sharing session right now. Welcome, Javier. Miss. Welcome, Mr. Javier. Hello, how are you? I'm yes, great. Ah, how are you guys, teachers? You can reply to Mr. Javier in the Zoom. Uh, how are you? How are you? So yes, just to for uh, get to know uh, Mr. Javier, uh, what's the time now right now over there? Uh, right now is 8.42 at night. At night, yeah. So there's a time difference, definitely. And very, very grateful for uh, Mr. Javier to uh, be able to do this with us, uh, even though the time is, is a little bit late. And later on, yes, we'll drag a little bit to your sleeping time as well. So very, very grateful over there. So uh, Mr. Javier, uh, would, you be able to, would you be able to share with us like how do you start uh, kickstart your education journey before this, just to let all the teachers here to know you a little bit more. All right. Well, uh, I started my career back in 2014, uh, back in a, in a market crash in my country, Mexico. I'm originally from Mexico. Mm. And we have a big disacceleration economic crisis uh, hitting the United States all the way to Latin America. So there were a few opportunities back then. Uh, I had a lot of friends that were uh, graduating from college and they couldn't find a job. And it was like a year and still they were uh, trying to get jobs. They were trying to get jobs in anything that they, they could. Uh, some, some of them took jobs in, in fields that they didn't require to get a, a, a degree. So I saw that and I saw an opportunity to come here to the United States and work as a teacher. I took that opportunity and I thought that it was gonna be something temporary until I got my green card and then probably I could move to another, uh, another career. But suddenly I fell in love with the, with the, with the field of industry, which is the ah. education because you can impact people, you can meet a lot of people and you can uh, change the world with education. Wow, so it's an unexpected love that you fell into in this education line, right? So uh, I think this unexpected encounter is really, really benefits for all of us that you can, you, you just impacted, even in the Malaysian students and even in uh, these teachers, this batch of teachers over here. So really thankful to Mr. Avia to stay on in this education line. So to me, Mr. Avia is always a very resourceful person and a very innovative person in terms of using various tools and resources online, offline, right? Uh, doing hands-on, uh, this uh, creation of projects, doing uh, online projects as well. So can't wait to really learn from you again, Javier. And then later on, feel free, teachers, to uh, put in all the questions that you have 
to Mr. Javier in the Padlet link that I will share with you later on. So can't wait to start. Uh, over to you, uh, Mr. Javier. I'll pass the session, I'll pass the stage to you. Over to you. All right. Thank you so much. I'm very proud uh, and very honored to be in front of you today. I know that it's uh, early in the morning, Saturday in the morning, and you have a holiday. So I feel very proud that you are here with me today and that you are spending your morning with me. So I'm very, very honored for that. So let me start sharing my screen with you. Can you uh, see my screen? Yep, we can see it. All right. So let's get started. So the, the session is called Making Learning Visual, Immersive and Interactive and how you can start. Uh, and the title, uh, we change, I changed it a little bit, uh, actually uh, a couple of days ago because I had a, um, a meeting with JC and he told me about, uh, about you, what were your interests and stuff. So I had a, another title of the session that, uh, that sound more technical. So I changed it to, to be more easy going for you, especially on a, on a, on a, on a morning on a Saturday. So welcome everybody. So my name, as you say, is Javier Montiel. The, the, the original session title is XR Development. XR Development is something very particular, sounds very frightening, but as, as we pass through the slides, you will see that it's uh, really not. It's something simple, something that you can incorporate with your students and the goal of this session is to actually pull all, all those five uh, sessions that you took before and can make them visual, interactive, and immersive. So those are kind of the uh, goals for, for the session. So I'm here right now in the United States, uh, in, in Texas, and I live nearby uh, NASA. So Johnson Space Center is uh, around this area where you see the number 45, which is uh, the, the highway 45. And I teach here. I'm a teacher in Freeport, Texas, and I live around this area. It's called Richwood. So in order for me to travel to, to, um, to NASA or Johnson Space Center or Space Center Houston, it usually takes me about 45 minutes. So in case you want, uh, if you're wondering where are the airports around here, we have the big one over here in the, in, uh, around spring. And that's the biggest airport that we have. It's called the George Washington um, International uh, Airport. So I'm here near the coast. So I'm very sensitive to thunderstorms, to hurricanes, because whenever we have something, we have to leave running and go all the way to Houston. So I hope this uh, hurricane season, we will be safe. So as you can say, this um, field of industry, which is virtual reality, is not something that you probably will see results immediately, like on, the, on that same day. It will probably um, take a, a, a couple of tries, but uh, in, in life, you know, results on, are not instant. I've been teaching uh, and working since the year 2014, and I've been very fortunate to be in front of you because uh, I've been working with uh, Space Center Houston, doing some outreach um, programs for, for trying to bring people to, to Space Center Houston with a conference that is called SIG, Space Exploration Educators Conference. So I've been honored to be presenting uh, since the year 2011. And, and every year I'm invited, I, I, I work with a lot of friends, with a lot of uh, teams uh, from Colombia, Brazil, um, Mexico. So this is a, a, an, honor, an, an opportunity for me as well. So Jay, um, uh, Wimping also mentioned that I was, um, uh, a teacher advisor, I think, uh, for, for a NASA project with, uh, in company with WGBH. Uh, WGBH or GBH, which is called right now, is a media company that produces shows for NASA. So I was one of the science uh, advisors 
uh, for about four years. Uh, I work right now as um, with with magnitude to try to uh, to touch the lives of students with astrobotany, and I have a large group of, of friends all the way. These are some of their logos, but I work with over nine or ter- ten countries around the world. So as you can see, results are not easy; they take time. So I hope that you you will enjoy this journey of learning as you take your time because you never know where you start uh, or where you're gonna be in the future. Okay, and the goal of this session, and actually the goal of this knowledge is to empower communities. You are a community, you live within a community. So this is an opportunity for you to empower yourself with research, technology, passion and meaningful projects. So this is our motto, the motto of my team of nine different countries. And we want to, uh, for the students to be creative thinkers, uh, researchers, technologists, uh, people with passion and people that can find uh, connections in their lives with doing meaningful projects. And also this is what uh, the agenda is gonna be what is XR and why I'm not saying virtual reality right now. What does XR has to be with virtual reality? What can I, can I do with it? And how can I start doing this kind of crazy projects that you will enjoy as educators because they offer a challenge, an opportunity for an open door of possibilities with your imagination and your passion. So probably you're thinking right now, if it's uh, hard, if virtual reality is something hard, because we tend to, to see new things, uh, some, sometimes hard to do or frightening to do or challenging. So as you can see over here, we have lines of code and stuff. So that's for expert people. But with the session that we're gonna have today, I'm gonna teach you how to go around all of those and go straight to the creative process so you don't have to worry too much about coding uh, hard time like, like, like these guys are doing in virtual reality. So now that I have you engaged in this process of how to get started with virtual reality or XR, and now we're gonna cross a bridge between the interest, your initial interest that you have right now that you're spending your morning with me how can I go from this, this side all the way crossing the bridge? And for, in order for us to do that, we need skills. And some of the skills um, you probably already have them. Uh, the students might already have them because we live now in a society that is uh, very technological. A lot of the students uh, have cell phones right now they go or play with cell phones in their house or in, the, in their house might have computers or some of them are fortunate to have even VR, virtual reality headsets. So now we live in a society where technology is part of our daily, la- daily lives. So the skills that we're gonna use are some of the skills that the students already have. And uh, uh, as, as I was mentioning before, I'm gonna try to pull uh, all those sessions that you have today so you can make a sense uh, how you can improve the the learning experience for your students using these kinds of technologies with a simple um, uh, approach. So in order for us to do that, we have to sketch. Uh, You learn about sketching with uh, Valeria Rodriguez. She's very good at sketching. I, and I also work a lot with her because she has a brilliant man. She's very artistic and she has teach us a couple of sessions to do sketching. So now that I have the sketch, I'm gonna do something that is called CAD or 3D modeling. So I have my picture, my, my, uh, my idea, then I put it on a 3D model. I generate my model and export it, then I can import redesign, tweak it a little bit, code it if I want it, and then I can visualize. Uh, sounds very easy to, to, to do, 
but it might require a little bit of uh, training and skills, but don't worry, you are in good hands. So now, as I was telling you before, a lot of the skills that the students will need might already have them because it doesn't matter if you are creative, you can be creative in many ways, in any media. You can have your curiosity applied to paper, pencils, Play-Doh, or even the computer. Drawing is an important element of our session for today because if you don't have a clear idea of what you're going to be doing, that's going to be hard to do or hard to complete. Modeling, a lot of our students know how to model, let's say that way, because they have played in the past with uh, programs such as um, Minecraft or they uh, developed something in, in um, uh, what, what is that? Uh, Minecraft, uh, there's a lot of games that, that I, I, I can remember right now, but they use uh, like coding skills along with uh, put, put uh, stuff together like Coblox. My, my daughter uh, plays a lot of Coblox and she's modeling, she made my house and she made a beautiful job just, just by uh, interest. Uh, so we have drawing, modeling, we have navigating. Navigating in a 3D environment might be frightening, but the students already know how to do it because they play a lot of games online and they are uh, about navigating around a 3D area and the collaboration. The collaboration is key element in these kind of activities because it doesn't matter if you are bright, if you cannot collaborate and talk to, to a team, then you're gonna be a solitary uh, genius, let's say that way. So collaboration is key. So as you can see, a lot of our students already might have these skills, us as, an, as, as adults that we probably didn't grow with technology, might not be very uh, proficient at, at modeling or navigating, but if you guide the students the right way, the students will take that uh, load out of your back and they will try to do their best. So now this is very interesting. How can I make visual models interactive for any subject? As you um, learned, I work a lot with the aerospace industry doing uh, STEM projects, STEM programs and stuff. But my main goal for, for these kind of activities is to make them interactive. I use just the space theme, but you can apply to any subject. I choose that because space has a lot of application. It, it has a lot of engineering, design, it has biology, chemistry, name any field, and you can find it in the aerospace industry. So our team has chosen that theme because we feel that uh, a lot of the kids feel the impact uh, of doing something that is related to, to space. So now I would like to think for a moment, if you would like, or, or, if, or if you had the opportunity to draw something, wouldn't be that cool for you to actually go inside of your drawing or probably make your drawing interactive. I can see the back, I can see the inside, I can see the top, I can see the bottom. So this is why um, I think this is very powerful for us because our uh, drawings, our pictures are not gonna be staying just in 2D. What we can do is we can go from 2D uh, drawing to 3D modeling. This is the same model as you saw in the previous slide. This is something that, that it was done by, by my students in second grade. And we have done something similar to this with kindergarten students. And we have done a lot of crazy stuff, a lot of crazy projects with students all the way from middle school to high school. So as you can imagine, VR can be applied to any subject, any grade. And the, what is impressive about these kinds of projects is that the students can see their 
3D or, or, or their picture or their drawing uh, immersive. I can go inside of my, my, uh, my picture, my drawing or, or anything I have in my mind. I can go inside of it. I can make it interactive. And now that you have your fancy Faber Castell uh, kit or, or whatever you have, you can do a lot of uh, good projects with it. So now, as I was telling you, how can we make this meaningful for students uh, and have impact? The first uh, key element for us is that the students uh, have to be team players. If, if the students want to build something like this, they can be collaborating with each other to draw a picture where both of the students or a group of students can collaborate, draw a picture so they can communicate. Communication is key element on these kinds of projects. And the tool that we're gonna be exploring is cool enough that you can actually have uh, several students working in the same project at the same time. So this is something interesting that probably we cannot do with, uh, with a notepad or with a journal, but we can do it uh, with online resources uh, with the tool that we're gonna be exploring in a couple of minutes. Then communication, communication, communication is always the key. What do you like? How do you think? What do you think? How can we do? How can we explore this? How can we improve? So our key for these kinds of projects is communication. If we don't have a good communication with the students, uh, we, don't, we won't have a good project. And based on my experience, when students are doing these kinds of projects, they are immersed because it is uh, visually appealing, is very attractive for the students that you don't have any problem at all in your classroom. The only problem that, we, that you will have in your classroom is how to make these, uh, I don't know, less, uh, less intimidating or sometimes uh, for the students, but once the students uh, get their hands on these kinds of tools, the students won't give you any kinds of prob problems or praise until they ask you something. And if then they, if you don't know the answer, they can search because a, a lot of the things that my students uh, learn is by themselves. It's not me teaching. I just teach like the basic. I, I can teach you how to, to put stuff in there, how to import, how to export, how to draw the picture and stuff. But a lot of the things the students get in charge. The students get in charge because they love it, they like it, and they see something that they have never done before. And now they feel powerful because they can see what they're having in their hand in their in their minds and put it to work. So as you can see, we have something that is that I call vocabulary working process, where students working in these kinds of projects are going to be listening, are going to be speaking, are going to be writing, are and they're going to be sharing. So if you complete these kinds of circles, the vocabulary of your students is going to be a working vocabulary. Now, a working vocabulary is something important in education because I think research mentions that in order for students to master a keyword, they have to listen to it at least 27 times. So if you want to master a skill, if you want to master uh, a key uh, element or a keyword, you can use this because the students are gonna be talking no uh, non-stop about that specific word, that specific concept that the students are going to be embedded in that vocabulary and that vocabulary is going to be part of their, of, of their um, inner process right now without thinking. Uh, writing. Why I'm mentioning writing and what this has to do with virtual reality. Uh, uh, digital tools are important. Digital tools are uh, interesting, but the retention that the students might have just interacting or playing might not be necessary. The one, the one, the one that you want, if you don't make writing a centerpiece. 
So if you want to develop something with your students, make writing a centerpiece. So then after they write the research, they can go to their uh, their sketches. They can go then to the computers to create the, the 3D models. So writing is a key element in our um, journey. So instead of, for example, just having uh, to report uh, something on, about dinosaurs, which is this case, the students can make uh, an interactive uh, presentation based on the research and based on what they learn. Now, uh, the thinking process is the key, how the students think. Let's say, for example, in this uh, case, we have uh, students that we were learning about 3D shapes. Okay, so 3D shapes, as we know, are the shapes that are part of our world, and our world is three-dimensional. And how can we make those uh, 3D shapes make sense for our students? So that's the key, that's your challenge. How I'm gonna move my students from just learning uh, uh, academic stuff, which is, uh, for example, 3D shapes. How can make something so relevant for my students to actually uh, make them think and apply that knowledge into something that they would like to do or they would like to create. And that's another important element that in virtual reality, the resources are unlimited. I have unlimited resources uh, online because I can put a lot of cubes, a lot of, um, a lot of 3D shapes. But as you can see in our real world, that doesn't um, make sense because we only have, for example, whenever I'm building a table, I just have one piece of wood that I will put my my uh, my table and then I have the four legs and that's it. I don't have more. So in if you want sometimes for the students to create something interesting in 3D modeling, you can put them constraints. For example, in this uh, sample that we're looking over here, the students were challenged to use uh, 3D shapes and those 3D shapes were going to be a new playground for the school. So now the students are visualizing, again, they, they, we have the thinking process. They are talking, they are collaborating, they are writing, they are researching, and they are gonna put all of that knowledge into a simple problem. How can I solve this, okay? And I put them some constraint, A, hey, you can use only uh, five uh, cylinders. You can only use uh, one sphere. You can use uh, four rectangular prisms or you can put any number that you want. The students are gonna be using that constraint in order for them to build vocabulary. So their vocabulary now is gonna be part of the limitation and they're gonna be thinking about that word because the students are gonna be limiting themselves to interact with a limited number of uh, visual elements. So limitation is part also of the learning process and is also part of the learning journey. So another important thing on these kinds of projects, try to incorporate the analog world, not just go straight and spend the majority of your, of your um, of your time or your uh, of your school year doing things online. You can build bridges between the analog and the digital world so you can merge both of them. For example, in on this activity, the students created flowers. Uh, uh, you can download this, this app. I'm gonna uh, tell you a little bit later about that. It's called Clone. Clone is an app that you can put in your cell phone you can print a mat and you can put all your 3D models in there. So then you can scan it with your cell phone and those uh, models you can put them in, uh, in, in a program that like, like the one that we're gonna be working with and you can make those models digital. So now I'm building the bridge to go from the analog world, make the students uh, feel 
make the students uh, manipulate, make the students um, have that interactive uh, and kinesthetic uh, feel so they can make uh, this uh, learning opportunity building that bridge between the analog and the digital world. So in this sample, I don't know if I have the picture now. Okay, so with this example, what we were discovering with the students is the pollinization process. So the students uh, learn about the pollination process. They learn about the insects, how they pollinize the bee, the, the, sorry, the, the, the plants going from one flower to the other flower. And then we develop a, a, a bee, which is, uh, let me see my mouse, is, is right here. So the students also created the bee and then make the bee going around the flowers to pollinize the, the flowers. So as you can see, you can use any media, you can cross bridge because uh, virtual reality or extended realities are very inclusive and very open source that you can incorporate stuff that can be probably very creative. So you can use, so you can use that with your, with your students. Now, we're gonna be talking a little bit about business right here. What's in this for the future of my students? The World Economic Forum is listing 10 um, essential skills for the year 2025. And those uh, skills are for jobs, the jobs that are gonna be created in the future. What is the uh, profile of a worker gonna be uh, learning that in the year 2025, whenever I have these skills are gonna be helping me to open my future with uh, open doors, let's say that way. So as you can see, we have analytical and thinking and, and uh, analytic and thinking and innovation. So as you can see, a lot of the things that I'm talking about virtual reality, a lot of the projects that already uh, talked to you about are thinking about, are geared to, towards that. Make students think and innovate. Active learning and learning strategies, complex uh, problem solving, critical thinking and analysis, creativity, leadership, technology use, technology design, coding, resilience. This is very interesting. If the students don't know how to do something in VR, I don't know how, but they will come up with, with a solution because now we have Google, now we have a lot of tutorials in YouTube that in order for them to, uh, to attain something, they will have to have that resilience to tolerate stress, have uh, that flexibility to solve problems, and also reasoning, problem solving, and ideation. So as you can see, all of those uh, skills can be transferred easily to our young students. So whenever our young students are working with, with these kinds of projects, these will have something very interesting for them in their future. So it's not probably in the year 2025 when our students are gonna be knocking the job market um, outside trying to get a job, but they will have all these skills and they will have enough time for them to build others. So now we're gonna go back into what is inside. Let's say, for example, when you have your car, you open the hood, let's explore what is inside of virtual reality, why it works this way. So let's say, let's talk about some, uh, a word or, or or a concept that is called extended, re extended reality. Extended reality are all of those uh, technologies that are part of an umbrella. In extended reality or XR, you can find uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, mixed reality. And I think, I'm not pretty sure if the metaverse can be in that uh, specific concept as well. So extended reality, we call it VR, AR, and MR, virtual reality, augmented reality, and uh, mixed reality. We're gonna see a couple of samples of all of those. Now, um, as you can see, virtual reality is uh, important right now because a lot of the industries 
are going to be applying in one way or the other different applications of virtual reality or augmented reality in their workplace. As you can see in, in the graph on the left, a lot of the AR and VR is gearing towards the, 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 the video games, live events, and video entertainment. All of those are, are not necessarily for work, but they are for entertainment. As you, and, and probably you know, but entertaining play, uh, entertainment plays, uh, plays a big part of, of, the, of the industry, especially because a lot of the people go to the movies and the people they want, want to be entertained. So entertainment is a big player in the industry. And this is all research. I haven't found new research on the expenditure of the, of the people or the industries that are gonna be applying to, the, to, to XR. So it is thought that by, by the end of the year 2022, is gonna be around the, two, the $200 billion industry. So as you can see, a lot of our students now can be playing part with those specific skills that the industry might be requiring in the future. So now, as you can see, uh, this, this came yesterday and by the year, uh, in, in, the, in the next 10 years, is, this is gonna be 85 billion uh, industry by the, by the year uh, 2031. So virtual reality is here to stay, is here for the long run. So now let's uh, talk about a little bit how this technology works. The technology works in something similar to your cell phone. For example, we have our cell phones right here, right now, and our cell phone has something that, that we call them sensors. The sensors are like the five senses of the, of the technology devices, and some of them are used in conjunction with virtual reality. For example, the accelerometer. The accelerometer is that sensors that measure distance and not, uh, sorry, the, the movement of my cell phone and the orientation. Then we have, for example, tracking sensors, which are some, some of the new phones. Whenever I uh, open I, and close my, my, um, my hand, might send something and might snap a, a picture. So a lot of the sensors that we have in our cell phones are also in our virtual reality headsets. For example, I have a couple of samples here. This is one that is considered uh, industry standard, which is an Oculus uh, 2. And this uh, specific model has uh, tracking sensors. I can uh, move my hands and I can, uh, and this device can recognize, but, these are like fancy, uh, fancy headsets. The ones that we can probably find cheap with our students or in our schools are these ones, the ones that you can put your cell phones in. Uh, you will download an app and the app will do all the magic if you have the cell phone. If not, you can use uh, these kinds of projects and programs without using the cell phone. So. Uh, just an advice whenever you are uh, working with this or you want to uh, purchase one of these uh, headsets, make sure that it has this little trigger that, that you can find over here because this trigger allows you to interact with all stuff. This is like your mouse. Whenever I'm clicking here, it's going to be clicking in the screen. I'm going to show you a couple of samples how this looks like. So uh, extended reality again. What is the difference between, between virtual reality, mixed reality, and augmented reality? So virtual reality is um, something like this. As you can see on the left, I have my headset and I cannot be aware of my environment. I'm like, a, I have like a bandana over here, but I can see a stuff inside of my, my headset. So this is this might be something dangerous if the students are not um, sitting because they cannot see anything. They might fall in, in, 
all the years that I have been using this this technology, I've never I think I've never had anyone falling because I'm I'm laying the the rules straight. We're gonna sit and whenever we stand, we're gonna take the the headsets off. This is called augmented reality uh, on the right. So in augmented reality, I can see the digital layers of, uh, of technology or, or, um, or digital stuff that is in that. Uh, and at the same time, I can see my environment. So again, virtual reality, you put your headsets in augmented reality, you can see your environment, your computer, your, your uh, surrounding area. So you won't have any kind of problem or project. And this is um, mixed reality. Mixed reality is the combination of two. This is the combination of um, interactive, interacting digital objects with uh, analog objects. For example, on this, you can see that I have a drone flying and the motion of the hovering is being transferred to the legs. Look at the legs of the, of the helicopter is uh, kind of transferring that motion to, to, the, to the digital helicopter. So this is combi combining uh, the analog world and the digital world to try to create a, uh, a task. Okay, now how can I make this something relevant for myself, for my students, and how can I cross the bridge with my students. Uh, this is the two tools that we're gonna be focusing today. The first one is called uh, Tinkercad. Tinkercad is a 3D modeling software that is online that you can put in any device, in your computer, in your cell phone, if your students have iPads in the iPads work as well. Tinkercad is a free program. So anything that you can uh, model there is gonna stay there forever. And we also gonna use uh, code spaces. Code spaces has a tag price, but it has a lot of free features. And I can give you a code at the end of the session so you can explore a little bit the, the tools that you have um, in, in, in our in, in code spaces. So in one, you can model, and in the other one, you can build the virtual reality experience. That's called Co-Spaces and Tinkercad. And you can see the links over there. And Wimping is gonna be posting all of those, um, those links in the, in the chat or probably in Telegram or something like that. So how can we get started? First, uh, if you're a teacher, you can sign in in Tinkercad. This program will allow you to generate all those 3D models. And also you can create a teacher account in CoSpaces. So this is the, the, the code that I have uh, is Cos Javier MO. And you can have access to a 30 day trial. So in those 30 days, you will have unlimited um, access to all the tools that code spaces has. And what I've done in the past, for example, with some of the students that don't have access to, to code spaces, or if I think I'm just gonna use it for a couple of times in 30 days, I can first start with Tinkercad, doing the research, doing the the the, the all the the drawings, the sketches, all of that. So that way, when the students are ready, we're gonna go straight and attack virtual reality nonstop because we're gonna have uh, 30 days to complete our project. So that's what we have done with uh, Wemping and JC in the past when we did the Edu Galaxy, um, the Edu Galaxy program. We did that. We started with Tinkercad, then we apply the code for all of our teachers. And then we have 30 days to complete our challenge. And the students created something beautiful, something nice, like in two weeks, so, or one week. 
So it's up to you. So again, the first step uh, that we're gonna use to cross the bridge from being no novice to a XR development uh, or developer is gonna be the sketches, okay? So whenever you have something in your mind, you will have to draw. You will have to research why my rocket is this way, okay? So whenever I have something, it doesn't have to be very fancy. Uh, as long as you have something drawing in your paper, that's gonna help you to visualize that in, in a meaningful way that you will have to use all your skills to create something innovative. Then after that, we are gonna use CAD with, with Tinkercad. Whenever you sign in, you will start putting uh, putting blocks together. For example, in this, I am putting blocks together to create uh, to create uh, a rocket. I can use only solid shapes like this, or I can generate some some uh, a little bit more complex shapes in in this program. But as you can see, most of our of, of the objects that we have in our environment are made out of these basic shapes. And a rocket is not something that that is um, that is not um, it, it, it's not uh, different from from all those shapes. We can see the uh, key elements, which are cones, cylinders, uh, all of that. So we have all of those resources. Once we have one one um, one model, we are gonna export it, and then. Once we export that model, we're gonna open a file and we're gonna drag and drop that uh, those two two files into code spaces. This is uh, something fast, but we're gonna do it um, easy. And you can see all the process. Uh, this um, this video is gonna be recorded, so you can go back and you can probably check it uh, little by little. So you can enjoy it uh, at your own time, right? Right here, I'm selecting an environment for my for my rocket, and I can I, I can make it a little bit more interactive and interesting, like putting a uh, fire in there. You can see I can model, and the students know how to do that. I don't know why I I started my school year. This year, we have three weeks and we have been working with uh, this program and project probably two or three times. And a lot of the students are ahead of me because they know how to drag stuff together, how to move it, how to, uh, how to make it a little bit more uh, bigger or smaller. They know like the basic stuff. So a lot of the students are not um, afraid of these kinds of, of programs because this is something that well, they already have in their hands with their cell phones or with their computers whenever they play uh, Coblox or, um, or Minecraft or something like that. Now that I have my, my rocket, I can make it interactive using uh, tools. I can use um, uh, lines of codes in form of code blocks. Uh, code spaces call it code blocks. And as you can see in the screen, you can have animations, you can have uh, dialogues, you can make them run around, you can make them disappear, you can make them change colors or collision, you can use physics on, on that. So this is something interesting that the students can explore and as you as well. And as I was telling you, you don't have to be the expert on the first time. This might require a little bit of practice, but just as the bicycle, you cannot uh, learn how to run, uh, ride a bicycle on the first try. You have to try, try, try until you make it right for your students and yourself and the students are gonna help you a lot. So now that we have our, our program or our object ready, I can visualize it. Whenever I click here on play, 
Let me see. Okay, I'm putting in a line of code over here. So I think we can move. Oh no, I'm just showing the same slide. Okay, now visualize it. How this looks like, for example, in my fancy um, virtual reality headset looks something like this. You can have uh, co spaces in. You have a, an Oculus. If you don't have an Oculus, no problem. But in the end, it's the same thing because it's the same platform. Right now, I'm uh, inside of my virtual reality experience with just a few clicks because the program co spaces generates the whole the whole enchilada, like we say in, in Mexico, generates the whole thing. I don't have to worry about too much about um, coding that this can be compatible with a, with a cell phone. Uh, you can take that out of your mind because Cospaces does that. So this is uh, augmented uh, virtual reality. You can have the same experience with a cell phone and a headset like this. These are getting cheap right now because a lot of the people that thought that there was going to be a good idea are not buying it because they don't see a lot of uh, usage. But us as teachers, we can see a full potential of what we can do with our students. Now, our cell phones also can do the augmented reality experience. For example, I can scan a, a flat platform. And I can see my rocket somewhere is around here. So again, you don't have to worry about too much to make this uh, something fancy. Cold spaces makes this easy for you, for your students. So you can concentrate a lot of your effort in research, in developing uh, the academic language, in developing those uh, specific skills that you want to work with your students in your classroom. So you don't have to worry about uh, too much of technical skills. The students will acquire that because the students already might have those. So you can concentrate on what you do well, which is teaching. Now, instead of having the students to put all of the ideas in a journal, they can also put those ideas in a computer to make learning immersive and interactive. Okay, now let me show you a little bit how this looks like in real life, in my life as a teacher. For example, I told you that the first tool that you're gonna use, it's called uh, Tinkercad. Tinkercad is a software that will allow you to create uh, amazing stuff using 3D models. Um, I, I have, for example, here my, my account. You can sign as an educator here and you will have full access. Your students can join on this platform with just a few clicks. It's very, very simple to do. For example, my students join to my class uh, Using, using just a link. Uh, if I want to create a class, for example, I just click here. I create my class. I put the, my, my class name, what grade I'm teaching, the subjects if I want, then I create my, my class. Then, for example, on this, you will have um, a class code. And the students, whenever they are, they are, um, trying to link into a classroom, you can send this, this link into a Google Classroom, or you can use this uh, same link in an email. So that way, the students, whenever they click on that, they will create their account and they will join your classroom. So now what I can do with this kind of program, 
uh, you can do a lot of things. Uh, we're going to be concentrating in 3D models, but you can use these four circuits to simulate circuits and code blocks, which is uh, coding. So the most interesting part for me is 3D design and 3D modeling. So whenever I click on new, I can go here on, on 3D model. And I will have my work environment with um, Tinkercad. I'm going to create something very simple for our session. You can create a little bit uh, more complex whenever you, you have time. For example, I just drag and drop some items here on my work plane. And as you can see, you can resize, you can uh, elevate your, uh, your model here. You can rotate it. Uh -huh. You can rotate this. And over here, you'll have some control, for example, how to uh, visualize your 3D model. All something that I talk to my students a lot whenever they do uh, 3D modeling, they have to uh, rotate a lot because sometimes you put um, some uh, shapes here and you think that they are aligned, but whenever you rotate, they are probably not, okay? So I can put my, my objects together like this, and I can start building uh, interesting structures here. For example, whenever I have something like this, and this is something about creative process, if I don't have the specific shape that I need for my project, how can I do it? For example, if I wanna create something that is um, uh, a combination between these two uh, objects, I will have to create something that is called a hole. A hole, I tell my student, is like a bite. So if I'm biting uh, um, an object, it's gonna make a hole. So as you can see over here, Whenever I bite these two uh, these two pieces together, this it, it will make a hole like this. It is a little bit hard to see, but whenever you select these two pieces together and you combine them with this tool that is called group, now this made a chair. Okay. This might be a chair that the students might use in their, in their project, okay? So this is a simple chair that you can use for your uh, project, okay? So now I have my chair. Now, what can I do with a chair that is a 3D model? Let's say, for example, I was developing um, a program about how to create a classroom and one of the students is gonna create a, uh, a chair. Okay, I designed my chair over here. I did my research, I, I, I write my paper and all of that. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna export this piece, okay? So whenever I export this piece, it's gonna tell me or it's gonna ask me what do I want this for? And you're gonna use this uh, tool that is called an OBJ, actually it's a format, okay? It's an OBJ format. So whenever I click here, now I will have a 3D model that if I have a 3D printer, actually I can use this same, um, this same chair and I can put it on my 3D printer and it can be printed as well. So as you can see, the 3D modeling, uh, virtual reality, and 3D printing go hand in hand because they use the same principle of modeling. Okay, so now I have my chair. I downloaded my model here. And whenever I open this, I have two, two, um, two files. The first file, which is the OBJ, is the mathematical um, mathematic instructions of my model, the polygons. 
uh, and this is telling me the properties of the object with colors and textures, okay? So uh, an OBJ model is the polygon and the MTL is the instructions how this is embedded with colors and textures. So whenever I have my, my two uh, models, now I can do a lot of stuff with it. So let's say I can go back here and now I'm gonna go quick to my code spaces. In code spaces, where, what it, when you start in code spaces for the first time, it's gonna prompt you to create um, an account. Over here, you click on register. And this uh, same way that, that with Tinkercad will ask you for, uh, for your information, for your, uh, school i think and you will have this environment over here you can create your classroom <coughs> okay now i have my classroom and i can add students if i have um, them already here okay if i have students here I can use um, the, the students assigned to, to this, but if it's for the first time, I will have a class code, which is right here. So whenever a student wants to join, whenever they are, are creating their accounts, it will ask them for a class code. And this is what you're gonna put on. So the students can join into your classroom. So let's say, for example, I have a couple of samples here and I am going to start from scratch. So if I want to create something very easy, I am just going to click here on empty scene, large gallery. Uh, this is a diorama. These are some templates, but the ones that I always use is the empty scene, the large gallery or the merge cube. The merge cube is a, a cube that I'm gonna show you whenever I'm not in, in presenting mode. Uh, this merge cube, you're gonna put a digital um, a, a digital object there. And whenever I am rotating my, my cube, which I have in my hand right now, this is gonna be reading each side of the cube as a marker. And whenever I rotate my cube, it will also rotate the, the 3D model in my, in my cell phone. So again, I'm gonna go here on environment. I'm gonna click on empty scene. And um, some, something that is uh, very similar to CoSpace to and all the, the interactive games that the students play is very similar to that. You can rotate, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, okay? And whenever I click here on environment, I can choose any environment that I want. For example, for this activity, I can use this. This is like a house, okay? This is a house. And now how can I uh, put my chair right here? I can click here on upload or I can go straight to my, uh, my files. Let's see if I can make it from here. I'm gonna make it smaller. Okay, so I'm gonna select my two objects and drag them over here. Okay, now I got it, click on got it. And now I will have here where it says 3D models. Whenever I click here, it's gonna have my model. So I just, oh, I already have it imported here. Okay, it's too big, I can erase it. Or I can make it smaller with these controls. 
and just as um, as we did with um, Tinkercad, we can also elevate it. We can elevate it. We can uh, rotate it as well. Mm -hmm. This is snapping. Whenever I uh, am farther away, this won't snap um, too much. Okay. So this is just a simple demonstration of what you can do with a couple of clicks if you want to start building this kind of interactive activities with your student. Now, once I finish, I create it again. For example, I'm just gonna click on play. I am the camera, I am inside. Now, my drawing, my picture, my, my model is interactive, is immersive, and I can be around it. Okay, I can go inside and can, I can go outside. So you can see that we can create something very cool, very elegant with just uh, uh, a couple of clicks. Uh, as I'm telling you again, this probably might require a little bit of time, a little bit of training, but don't worry, your students will immediately start to go uh, ahead. You can probably need to, to tell them, hey, we're gonna wait a little bit, okay? So what else can I do? I can import uh, people right here. I can, with uh, double tapping, I can make uh, animations with um, with my um, with my characters over here. Go outside. I'm gonna try to find my little character or and put it inside. But anyway, you can import. Um, different um, different uh, stuff, different um, um, objects from the library. You can have a lot of the a lot of the things that you can probably use. For example, characters, uh, you can do animals, uh, transportation, you can build houses even with some uh, of the building blocks that you have here. You have walls, you can have this, uh, all of this, so you can build uh, even, um, even roads, you can build roads, um, and then you can code them. Code, code is a little bit more complex, but we're, we're, we're not gonna be coaching on, on that because that's uh, another, that could be another uh, subject or another training, how to code these, um, these objects. And now near to close to the closure of this um, session, I'm gonna go back again. So now these are some of the applications that our students, our partners, our friends are working with. Uh, for example, our students have worked in the past doing uh, research. This is a, a sample from one of our teachers, uh, Professor Max from uh, Tlaxcala. He's working with his amazing students and he is teaching how to make uh, Mars habitats. He even created his own school. So whenever the students are I don't know, trying to build something or, or if the administration wants to build something, they can do an animation of the students running around. The students can see how the new structure might look like. For example, this is one of the structures that, that they built. Where you're gonna be putting that? If, um, if your school are gonna be building something, how that new building is gonna look like in your, in your um, school? We have a friend, uh, Angelica Garcia. She's a trainer in um, in uh, the virtual reality laboratory in, Sp in Johnson Space Center. 
and she trains astronauts using virtual reality. She's the one that develops all the trainings that, that go inside of the virtual reality headsets. So she trains astronauts. We have uh, another uh, student. Uh, we have one student from Colombia, uh, Jesus David. Jesus is uh, helping us to understand a little bit more something that is called the metaverse. He has the skills that I don't have. To, to create uh, more complex models using another uh, program. We have uh, Professor um, Carlos, he is working with us as well. So he is mixing uh, robots with virtual reality. And as you can see, we have this model that the students uh, built and they snap a picture with a, with a cell phone. Now, what's gonna be the future in, in probably 10, 15, 20 years. Now there's a lot of hype in something that is called the metaverse. The metaverse is that, uh, that um, holy grail that educators and industries are competing. We have uh, meta, which is now Facebook. We have um, uh, big players in the industry, such as, um, as Microsoft trying to get uh, a, a market share for this. So they are exploring new opportunities, new venue, venues to see how uh, the, the future of virtual reality and augmented reality might look like. For example, on this uh, sample, I, I had the opportunity to attend this, uh, this um this was something that is called the, uh, oh, I forgot, the, the World Fair. The World Fair is a, a fair that is hosted any other year around the world. This a specific time, it, it was in Dubai. So the people from the World Fair have uh, their, their fair in Dubai, but they also, the developers create the World Fair in the metaverse. So you can go and, and experience those structures that are very innovative without trying without going to Dubai because going to Dubai for me is very expensive. I don't know for you, you're kind of close, uh, but probably is expensive as well. Uh, then you have uh, this, um, this kind of learning opportunities where you can interact with people to talk about the the United Nations Sustainable Goals. There, there was a gathering where you can um, talk to, to people. You don't necessarily have to have a virtual headset. You can participate in the metaverse, virtual reality, augmented reality with your cell phones or, or with your computers. And also, uh, we're trying to build something in the metaverse, uh, trying to create a, a, an education experience. So our students from around the world might create a Mars habitat based on the research, and they will they will put some um, some objects in there, some structures in there, some robots in there, so they can or see how uh, Mars habitat might, might look like in the future using the metaverse. Most of our students don't have a headset, but they can use their, their computers, they, they can use their, um, their cell phone. And now the question is, since this is about um, stories, the, the, what we can build with our skills, with our training, with our passion, with all the skills that you learned from our previous presenters, now it's up to you. What is the story that you will create? What is the story that you will uh, find interesting? So probably next time, instead of me, uh, one of you might be presenting your, your work, your research, and especially your experience uh, with your students. And this is the end of our session. I'm open for um, a couple, um, all the questions that you have. Uh, those are my, my, 
my contact information. Uh, you can follow my work in my professional work in Twitter. And uh, I have my two websites. Uh, the first one is Javier Montiel Studio. That's a little bit of my professional profile. And the Aerospace Academy are all the programs that I develop for different countries and help develop and implement in different countries. Uh, thank you so much. Now, if you have a couple of questions, I'm free. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the powerful sharing, uh, Mr. Javier. And Javier, I think I liked, I really love the final, final thoughts of uh, final, final slides is that what stories you want to create, what kind of projects or what stories, what kind of experience you want to create for you and your students. That is, uh, I think uh, it's a very uh, important and very inspiring take home message for all the teachers over here. So teachers, uh, feel free to put in your questions uh, in the Padlet itself for uh, Javier. Meanwhile, I think I addressed this uh, technical question by uh, teacher Liao, uh, Chegu Liao from here. Uh, would you be able to show, Javier, would you be able to show teacher how to add wordings into the code spaces? I think um, this Mr. Liao is asking about code spaces, add wording or add, uh, his question is how to add wording or line or projection line into it. I'm not sure what is a line and projection line, but I think uh, Mr. Javier uh, would be able to show how to add wording uh, in uh, just now the, the chair project, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is um, the, the same environment um, or actually the same uh, experience as, as well. So over here I have my, my models and I think wording means words. Uh, I don't know if that's the one that you um, that you were thinking. For example, you can have different techniques. One of them, I can use this, and I can create um, text, really text. I don't know if that's that's what you want. Okay, so that's one way to put words in um, in code spaces. Or you can make uh, your uh, your character talk. You can say things. You can um, you can even code. Uh, this might require more time, but over here you can actually. Um, Okay, so over here you have uh, this search box. So whenever you um, have something that you want to code, for example, this, I can show uh, a text if I click on my character. I, I can ask something, uh, let's say for example, when I was uh, in, in, in high school, I used to play a lot of The Legend of Zelda. I don't know if you are familiar with it. So the Legend of Zelda, you go to the characters, you click on a character or, uh, or approach to a character and the character begins to, to talk to you using, using um, chat boxes like this. So you can um, have that as well in uh, code spaces. So whenever I have something here, I can um, add the, all the interactions with text not just in, 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 in people, but you can also have uh, walls here. You can uh, snap, for example, pictures uh, whenever you upload. You can, for example, one of your teachers um, or, or, or presenters talk to you about, uh, about um, videos, okay? You can create videos, you can uh, import videos to here. They have to be MP3 format. You can snap, for example, if you have a research that is a paper, you can snap the, the paper and you can put the, the, the picture here. So you can upload images such as a, uh, JP, J, uh, PNG, GIF. Uh, so we have a lot of those. You can put here uh, like posters, uh, pictures of, of the students working, and this is, this is safe. So whenever you want to uh, visualize something in your cell phone, you can click here on share. Uh, you can click here, share unlisted. Uh, I only click on this because otherwise if I publish this, 
This is going to be in the Cool Spaces Gallery, and everybody can look for it. So this is more private, share, unlisted. And over here, I, I tell my students to share again. Uh, you can type here, what, what are you sharing? The description and stuff, share. And then whenever you want to uh, put something in, 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 a, in a cell phone, you can scan that QR code. Let me do it from my phone. If, if I have, uh, let me stop sharing my screen. So you have the code, you have a link that you can share with your students in Google Classroom in, um, or in an email. But if you download the, the app, if you scan the code, you can click here on play and, and you have the game here right now, okay? So this is like a video game here, but if I tap here where you have the, the headset, this is gonna be splitting in, in two. So now I can put my cell phone inside this so it can be interactive. Whenever I pull the trigger, it's gonna make the camera walk or over here I have other options, which is um, again here where you have the little um, headset. Here, you can click where it says uh, B viewing AR. Okay, so now I'm gonna move around my, my cell phone here and I don't know if you can see it. Can you see the wall here? I can move around my cell phone and it's like I have the camera, okay? So that's a very good question and thank you for that because you'll learn a little bit more on how to visualize your 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 project. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Javier, for showing us the uh, the, the demonstration and uh, hopefully uh, it helps the teachers to learn a little bit more. Yeah, and very, very interesting is that uh, even with the phone, we can play the scene again and then as uh, as like uh, like a game, right? Like a like little, little environment that, that uh, students can be immersed into it. So uh, speaking of phone, right? Uh, just now there's the uh, uh, same 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 teacher is asking. Uh, we can't use phone to create the scenes, right? We have to use the laptop to log in into the code spaces. No, you can you can create from here. So if you download the app, code space, you can have the same controls that you have in the computer. I'm gonna show you here so i have the app over here i have my sample let me see it's gonna do something quick this is one sample for example from one of my uh, students we were talking about labor day and they were representing how they would like to um, to celebrate uh, Labor Day, the jobs that we have in our community. So you can work straight from the from the cell phone if you want. Uh, the only difference between these and the um, and the let me see. Oh no, now they change it because in the past you could you could not. Uh, upload 3D models, but now they change it. You can now mm. put 3D models from the cell phone and pictures. In the previous version, you couldn't do all of that. And uh, actually you can play sounds as well. You can put like background music and all of that. You can, for example, whenever you click on a door, you can knock it and you can you can hear the sound of the door uh, knocking, being knocked. Okay, so actually, phone is usable. Phone is usable to create. Uh, just that uh, laptop, of course, is uh, is a little bit more user friendly. Yeah, that depends on your convenience. How about Tinkercad? Uh, have you Tinkercad can use a phone to create the models. Yes, uh -huh. yes, you can create uh -huh. models. 
it's a little bit harder to do in a small screen because you have to use your fingers and it's hard. You have a, I have an iPad, I have a big iPad here, uh, this one, uh, but I prefer to use my computer. And if you have the opportunity, you can purchase one of these. This is an Intuos uh, tablet. Uh, this is very, very useful for 3D modeling, for uh, Tinkercad, for drawing, for, for sketching. You can plug this in your computer and you can use the pen as a mouse. So you can, you can do things faster with this. Okay, so yes, it's both uh, applicable in phone and in uh, in in laptop as well. It's a very very useful as because uh, Tinkercad is free, right? Tinkercad is free, yes. and then Cool Spaces they are free feature. They are also paid feature. So um, uh, just to clarify for the teachers, the code that uh, have you just shared with us, it a paid feature, right? We can use the code, but we can use the paid feature for thirty days. Uh huh. For thirty days. Yeah, so it's a bonus uh, from Javier to teachers over here, exclusive bonus. So uh, teachers uh, can feel free to appreciate, uh, show some appreciation to Javier. Uh, he very, very graciously gave the code to all of you, to all the teachers to use this paid feature uh, freely, a uh, paid feature complimentary for 30 days. So feel free to uh, experiment it uh, with your students in your classroom. Yes, our teacher Sassi is giving a love emojis. Yes, feel free to, uh, you know, show some appreciation to Javier because this is uh, once a lifetime, uh, not once a lifetime, this is a very, very uh, good opportunity for you to use this uh, paid feature uh, uh, freely uh, for your students for these 30 days. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much now, for I having a, a, I have a question for the teachers. Can you type mm. in our chat uh, how you can use this in your classroom. What can you teach with it? Uh, I was talking to uh, JC the other day about how to use it in math. For example, I talked to him about the, the 3D shapes. I also talked to him about arrays, which are the basic principles for multiplication. So uh, last year, my students create arrays to learn a little bit of multiplication. They use uh, they put like dinosaurs, they put plants in a race so they uh, can understand a little bit um, how an array looks like. And you can see like the rows and the columns to multiply the, the objects. So that's another application. But I'm curious what you can do in your classroom with the subjects that you teach. Could be any art, science, math, um, literature, literature uh, could, could be any subject because uh, virtual reality can apply to anything. One of the things that uh, we used to do in the past is that we read a book and then we recreated the, the book in virtual reality. Let's say for example, the three little pigs or uh, one that is for, um, for Christmas, which is the gingerbread man. We recreated that that same uh, that same play in in virtual reality, and the students really really love it. Okay, teachers, as you say, up for upper level, I think maths. Uh, in terms of maths, we'll explore chapters like transformation, motion along straight line, right? Mm -hmm. So, a uh, motion, uh, definitely the the grid can be very very helpful in Tinkercad and also in the uh, school spaces as well. Yeah, so uh, this is a very interesting question from Javier. I also think the same to ask to ask the teachers. What ideas do you have? Let, let's brainstorm for a while, like for, for two, three minutes. What ideas do you have to create for, uh, with your students, along with your students using this Tinkercad and also code spaces? Right? Uh, you can start with uh, as simple as what items you want your students to create or what kind of project as a whole you want them to create. Uh, what kind of environment, what kind of scene, what kind of chapters you want to apply in in your subject, right? So they just feel free to put into the Zoom chat, right? Uh, yes, uh, teacher Puva Nesvari say, uh, for the design and technology lesson, we implement this in Scratch topic. Uh, so what uh, teacher, what, what they are creating in, the, in, in this uh, design and technology? Um. Uh, for example, this um, this is similar to Scratch 
because Scratch used the kind of the same platform of uh, of codes of uh, blocks of code. So it uses the same kind of uh, framework, and now we have it in in code spaces. So now, if you know how to use Scratch, you can use how uh, you know how to code in code space. If you know how to code in uh, code space, you can use it in Scratch. So you can have like the best of both both worlds with the same uh, kind of skill, which is the coding. And they see the, the 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 lines of code. For example, whenever you are on Scratch, I think there's a button over there that you put the, the lines of code. But when you press the button, you can see the actual codes, the actual uh, lines of codes. Same thing happens with uh, code spaces. You have the, all those options in there. And just to um, to expand a little bit more on uh, on teacher Sassy. She's talking about motion, straight lines and stuff. There's a simulator of gravity in, in cold spaces. You can simulate gravity, um, friction, you can simulate um, free falls, uh, all, all of that, all the physics concepts. I don't use it because uh, that's not the line of work that I'm working with, but you can use all of those uh, in cold spaces as well. Yes, definitely. So this is a teacher Sassi and teacher Puvanes Fari idea. I feel free to be expand expand on it uh, using these two apps, right? What else that we can do uh, in using these two apps or using this uh, technology? Teachers, feel free to comment down below uh, your ideas, your ideas, so that uh, other teachers can take it as a reference as well. So uh, this is very important. Uh, we already learned from uh, uh, Mr. Javier, and we already exposed to these two new apps to us. And then what can we do about it? Uh, in our classroom that's very important it's actually very easy uh, to me myself uh, two years ago I think two years ago we used this app in Edu Galaxy I, when I first used it I was also uh, a little bit like eh, uh, seems like difficult I haven't really go and touch it seems like difficult but once I go and explore it once I go and literally like what Javier said it's just a few clicks right you just uh, use your mouse click here click there and then use your idea oh I want to add this add that uh, just like uh, a chef, you want to cook this, cook that, put in these ingredients. Oh, voila, uh, something new uh, happening. That's how our students' creativity process can be uh, can be triggered, can be uh, inspired. So teacher Abdul Razak saying, animal and plant cell model. Wow, that's a very good idea that uh, students easily can uh, apply and learn. Plasma membrane structure model in biology. I, I think teacher Abdul Razak is secondary school teacher. So biology can use as well this uh, model, right? Okay, so- example, hmm. Sorry, for example, in biology, one of the projects, uh, I don't know, in, in Malaysia, but in Mexico, we used to model the cell using Plato or, or any other uh, media using our hands. Let's imagine that you can uh, create the cell and uh, that cell, can be hands-on activity or something like that. And you can use uh, the, clone, the, the app that is clone, which is the one that I have here. I'm gonna type the, the name in the chat in a few minutes. And you can scan uh, objects. For example, these are the bees that the students uh, created last year. Um, these are the flowers that the students uh, created. You can see the, how this is done. You can mm. have a, a mat and then you can scan. You will have a dome over here. And then you can scan the cell and the students can go inside of the cell and see close what they built with their own hands. So this is very interesting for, for a project with, with your students. And since a lot of these, um, these things are new, and a lot of our teachers are working with us for a couple of years now. They are winning a lot of competitions mm -hmm. and the students as well. Our students have been featured in uh, news media. We have uh, uh, some uh, teachers that, that have been competing for awards because they are using virtual reality, which is a new field in their daily practice that whenever they apply to, uh, to uh, an award, 
they are getting those awards because they know how to create these bridges between uh, the analog and the digital world. And they have an impact in their community because it's, they're just not staying with that. They are uh, engaging the whole community to create these kinds of projects. And then whenever is the application time, they just submit the pictures, they submit uh, anything that they can submit and they are getting prizes. And, and I'm very, very proud that our teachers are getting prizes because of this. Very, very nice. Very, very nice sharing uh, the stories and experience from uh, Javier's side. Yes, uh, teacher Rekha, imaginary animals uh, for, for students' activities. That's a very, very good idea as well. So feel free to put in more ideas. So speaking of which, uh, just now teacher Javier, uh, Mr. Javier has mentioned about the competition. So uh, one of the questions that I actually want to bring up from the Padlet is that, uh, there you go, let me go full screen. Is there any international 3D modeling uh, or VR virtual reality related competition that um, Mr. Mr. Javier are aware about that Malaysian students, even Malaysian students can join? So just to ask for the sake of, for the, on behalf of our teachers over here. Uh, we don't have one current right now. There was, uh, there's one from, I think the Mars Society. The Mars Society, if you Google Mars Society, I don't know when is a deadline of it, or if it was a deadline, but the, the competition is to create a 3D model of something that astronauts might use on Mars. And they have awards and all of that. Uh, it's called uh, the Mars Society, I think. I don't know if the competition already finished, but we also, we're gonna be launching a program. We hope that in October about the metaverse. So what mm. you are gonna be doing is creating 3D models either on Tinkercad or in another software. And we're gonna be participating in this uh, global community of uh, teachers and students interacting with each other. And I think there's another uh, question related to that. Uh, in spatial, you can create uh, this uh, sort of metaverse that we have right now. We don't have the full potential of the metaverse as it is right now, but you can put together students. They can interact with each other you, they can build something and place it in there. So it's very interesting what, what the students can do. It's a little bit more tricky. I like more uh, as it is right now as, uh, as a beginner's experience, uh, code spaces. Because in code spaces, you can create teams uh, to create uh, an, an environment. Let's say, for example, I'm creating my my classroom, I'm gonna put chairs and stuff, and I can put four students, uh, three students, seven students, working in the same environment. So that's something cool that, that CoSpaces has. All right, so uh, I think uh, Mr. Javier can uh, I think, uh, join the Telegram group and also share the information when it in it's launched in our Telegram group itself or share to, to me, then I'll share with the teachers so that, you know, our Malaysian students can also have this kind of exposure. Teachers can uh, pick a few students or, or see uh, which students are potential to join in this uh, 3D modeling or, or, or VR kind of competition. And it's international. So the international exposure is definitely a good experience for our student itself. So I think uh, just now I just bumped this question up because uh, just now uh, teacher um, Mr. Javier has mentioned the uh, one of the app that we, we can actually connect the students online, right? So for cold spaces, I noticed that the view is from yourself. The camera is just like playing a games with yourself. So how about, let's say we can have all other students joining in and they have different characters in this 3D space. What kind of app that we can do that? Okay, for uh. that, Okay, for that is um, is uh, uh, what is that? Um, not code spaces because whenever you're doing code spaces, you cannot interact with each other inside of the of the of the game. Let's say that way mm. because uh, it generates like a copy, and everybody will have a copy, and everybody will be a, uh, 
their own camera. Yes. So it's interactive. The spatial is uh, the part that is interactive because uh, people can get together and anybody can be their own avatar. You can take your picture to create your avatar or you can create your avatar for from, from scratch and they can interact with each other. They can talk to each other. They can have the, their microphones open, their web cameras open. They can share this, their screen like a Zoom, but interactive. Mm. Uh -huh. So this is uh, something that if you, if you'd like to explore, uh, spatial uh, is the, the, the way to go. Right, right, right. So that's uh, one of the, uh, I think it just addressed this teacher's question. Spatial is one of the app that you can connect students like Zoom, but it's a 3D kind of environment. So we walk like a game, like like Counter-Strike, like, uh, like other 3D games, then we can talk to each other using like camera uh, on or something like that. So that, that is very interesting. So then uh, teachers can feel free to create something like that for your students so that oh, uh, uh, it's, learn, uh, it's fun to learn uh, during your class. Yep. Yeah. So um, is the spatial free to use for all teachers? Uh -huh. It's free, but since it's, um, it's new, they are putting uh, like cool spaces a little bit. They explore a feature and they see that it's kind of popular and they put in a price tag on it, but you can do a lot of stuff with the free stuff. Um, I don't know what the paid version is like because I'm using just the, the, the free version, but I can do a lot of stuff with the free version, which is just developing this idea of making a Mars community where everybody can uh, collaborate. So I think as it is right now, it works, but I don't know if they're changing stuff in the future, probably they, they, they will see that it's something popular and, and they will put it behind a, a price wall. So, you know how technology is, it becomes popular until they someone finds a market for it. Yes, definitely. So yeah, uh, feel free to use it before they actually monetize it, right? Uh, after that, we can uh, explore other apps as well. So yes, uh, just to jump into the next question. Uh, this is very related to just now what we asked uh, in the Zoom chat. Uh, Javier, would you be able to share a few examples of projects that you apply Tinkercad and Core Spaces? I think I saw it from the uh, screen sharing just now. There's a Mars Habitat that we 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 uh, the, uh Javier I think shared with us before as well uh, with me and Jay. So I think uh, uh Javier can share a few like I think applicable examples that you you think uh, teachers in Malaysia, teachers in secondary school, in primary school can apply. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can send you a link. In the chat. Mm -hmm. Seems. I can share this. Uh, let me share my screen so you can see what I'm what I'm doing. Okay. I'll stop share. Okay, so this is one demo that uh, our team put together for um, for Space Inter Houston. Uh, this was one of the um, sessions that we uh, presented. These are models from NASA. So this is something cool that online you can find models for anything. Anything that you can imagine are on the web. One of them is uh, if you go to Google and you type uh, NASA 3D models. First link, you're gonna have a lot of resources that you can use. For example, I can use the uh, Apollo lunar model for some of my projects. Uh, some of them are hard to maneuver because they are in different formats. So mm -hmm. as long as you have a model that is um, OBJ, the, the one that we uh, explore with Tinkercad, OBJ, you can uh, export that straight to CoSpace. If not, you will have to use something um, more complicated, which is a software that is free and is called, right here I have it, Blender, okay? So if it doesn't open the, the model in code spaces, it's very likely that the model will open in Blender. So whenever I have a model in Blender, as you can see, this is 
like uh, more hardcore in, in, in virtual reality development. This is for modeling. This is more like, uh, like a professional software. And you can see it's very complex. So I don't know about you, but if I'm a teacher, I won't go this way. I will go to uh, Tinkercad. You won't have like the same results, but you will have something similar. Okay, so let me see if I have something open here. Uh, for example, this. This is a, a model of the Ingenuity rover. Oh, I've been to visibility. move all my screens because I don't see you very well. Okay, for example, this is a, a, a model from NASA that um, a coast space cannot process because it has a lot of details, a lot of uh, stuff, uh, a lot of uh, textures, uh, very complex. So the thing that you are gonna do, uh, oh my computer is block. There's a way that you can export this into an OVJ format. So whenever you have the OVJ, OVJ format for this model, here export, and over here says OVJ. So you export this model, and then you will have the object that you can export same thing drag and drop the 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 files and you will have have it over here this is the same model that you saw in the other program so you just have to export it and import it over there using blender so as i was telling you there's a lot of things online. This is one of the resources, but it's just uh, it's just NASA. If you go to um, uh, it's called Thingiverse. Okay, Thingiverse is a collection of three D models for anything. Um, you can use these objects for 3D printing, but as I was telling you, these objects, I can import anything that is an OBJ because an OBJ is a format for 3D printers. So let's say that I want to use this in Tinkercad. I just have to download the file. Now it is in my computer. Can open that. And then I I I will have my object. Right here. So I have the, the model, the STL model. I can use the STLs or I can use the OBJs. So I can drag and drop those objects into um, code spaces. So I can use these, let's say for example, cells. Um, these, are, these are cell models or uh, animals. You can have animals here, dinosaurs, butterfly, anything you can imagine. I can export all of these into um, think into code spaces so the students uh, can actually use. Okay, so imagine that you have a, a model like this. You can export it because uh, over here in code spaces, we probably don't have uh, the characters from the three little pigs. I don't have the pigs here but I can export them and import them from here or the wolf. 
I can use a wolf from here to be part of the of, of the um, of the characters in my story. Okay. So wow, so cool. interesting. Uh, that's those wolf looks very very cool as well. So thank you so much, Javier, for sharing these uh, tools as well. As I said, uh, Javier is very very resourceful. Can have uh, a lot of things that so many extra bonuses that share with teachers just now the Thingiverse, the NASA uh, models as well. So uh, from uh, have your side, right? The experience uh, from have your side, uh, what kind of programs are very interesting programs or what kind of like uh, projects that you have done uh, with your students before? For example, I think Mars Habitat is one of it. Just now you shared with us uh, the uh, the environment with uh, a lot of like Mars uh, Rover or Mars, uh, what, what tools or what devices or what machines and robots you want to explore in Mars, then you create in the scene, right? Uh, that That is what... Uh, one of the example. Any other examples that you you wish to share with teachers, like projects and programs that they can refer to, they can have as a source of inspiration. Yes, uh, our last project last year for our session in Space Center Houston was called Mixed Reality Robots. So the the teachers actually created something interesting, and the students as well. Because we have, for example, these kinds of robots that I have over here. So this is a line follower robot, okay? So I have my robot over here or my Lego NXT or whatever robot I, I have. I can code it, I can make it run. But sometimes we are limited with the physical world because we don't have, for example, this is just uh, straight, okay? This is called uh, MDF, this is the, the material, but I cannot have like curves, I cannot have like, uh, like the, uh, different structures because it's very hard to model in, in, in wood like this. Or in the, um, in the Lego robots, the, the Lego robots are like straight lines are very boxy, but you can create a robot in Tinkercad, put it in this, and you can mount that in your robot. So mm. that way you are covering the, 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 the analog world, which is the coding and the interaction with the environment. But also you can have the ideation of a better robot that I don't have the possibilities because I just have Legos, because I just have a cardboard, because I just have a, 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 any, any kind of material, but I'm not limited anymore because I can use digital layers to see how my concept might look like and interact in the real world using uh, the resources that I already have. And I don't have to to purchase anything crazy because probably uh, some of you might have robots or some of you might have uh, uh, any other sort of, uh, of material. One of our students from Mexico, he, he got a, a big award for, for his state. He hmm. created one robot from scratch. He, put, uh, he pulled together uh, old radios uh, with those uh, cassette tapes he uh, put the motors uh, all together and he used uh, an old, um, what is that, uh, uh, a game stick or uh, something like that. So with Scratch, he created his own robot and he put something like this and put the rocket that I, that I uh, show you. So he was driving the, the, the robot with his hands and then he programmed the, the rocket to launch in a in a certain um, time, so you know there's there's a lot of needs in our countries. There's a lot of solutions that we can find for our students with something that is not that expensive mm -hmm. or is free, like Tinkercad and CoSpaces. Well put, well put, uh, Mr. Javier. Like there's very uh, very much a resources that is free for us to use uh, out there, and then uh, solutions are always there for uh, for our students. 
So um, uh, any like award-winning like kind of programs that uh, Mr. Javier want to share with us? Uh, just now we, we share also like uh, to the teachers, uh, Mr. Javier has received the award from the uh, uh, top 100 uh, visionaries, the top 100 uh, world uh, leaders, so on and so forth. Is, is it based on one of your projects or is it like uh, how, how, how is it awarded or something like that? To be honest, I don't know. I asked and they started laughing because they, they didn't want to tell me. But <laughs> they, uh, what they did was going to social media and start following uh, people uh, like uh, on the background. You, you cannot see like the, that people is uh, having, I don't know, any interaction with me, but he was or, or she was following the work that I was doing. So I don't know, probably I think it's that way or, or something, but uh, it was- so There's no one specific award-winning program, but that is like accumulative uh, programs that you have uh, created and uh, conducted with the students and with the teachers, and then it's seen by the organization. And that's why the award is being uh, given. Uh, I think they, they're they like headhunters. They go uh. and try to find people to see different kinds of projects, different kinds of programs and stuff. This, this edition was in, uh, in Las Vegas. The previous year was in, in Dubai. So they flip flop. One, one year is in Dubai, the next, day, the next year is gonna be in Vegas. So they, they alternate. Yes, so uh, I think from all the past uh, programs or all the past education projects that uh, have you have created, any like, uh, very very memorable one of uh, success stories or any transformations that you've seen from the students uh, that you are, you are you are you are able to share with the teachers uh, today of course and it is the the reason that i'm here in front of you today so whenever i started teaching back in 2004 uh, i didn't have any idea how to teach or what to do because i i was straight out of college I was um, I was in a in a program with uh, with administration and computer science, so my background was not in education. So I began to run out of ideas of what to do, and there was one student who told me, uh, "Hey, Mr. Montiel, I would like to go to Mars." And a lot of the students begin mm. to laugh uh, because. Back then, it wasn't. It, it was not possible. We had the first, uh, the first rovers landing over there. But uh, I told the students, you know what? We can probably do something. Uh, we can probably not go to Mars, but we can do something. And then I begin to develop a series of lesson plans that uh, might take uh, like a virtual tour to the students to Mars. So back then, it took, in 2004, we have uh, the, um, these two rovers, Opportunity and Discovery, I think, in, in Mars. And there was a lot of hype from the scientific community. And there were some institutions that were having rovers in their universities, and you can drive them from distance. So you can go to a computer, drive uh, a, a robot that is in... Um, it was uh, in California. There were like four, four rovers in the United States and one in UK. So we, we had a lot of fun. We learned a lot. And those lesson plans, I collected them. And the next year, I use them again. And then the next year, I use them again. And I improve them and I improve them and I improve them. And to to make the the long story short those lesson plans whenever there was a, a teacher who went to to work for nasa mm -hmm. and she came back to the school seven years later and uh, and i told told her, hey uh, do you want to take a look to see what i'm what i'm doing with my students because i was producing videos so so the, the session that, that you have for about videos is very powerful to me because videoing is very important. Try to video yourself, uh, video your, your, um, your efforts because you don't know where those videos might end. So That's true. 
that that person who came to to do a, a presentation for our students in our school uh, was very impressed with with the videos that I produced, and then she asked me to have them. She sent those videos to headquarters in NASA in Washington D.C., mm. and they asked me to develop lesson plans, official lesson plans for NASA. They wanted to hire me, but back then I didn't have my green card. I was just uh, in a in a in a position where I was just hired to be a teacher. So they couldn't hire me, but I told them, "Hey, uh, I would like to collaborate. Um, what? Why don't you give me the opportunity to be uh, a volunteer?" So I, I started working as a volunteer, developing lesson plans for for NASA. Uh, I was there for a year and the branch closed, completely closed for, for the year because they run out of funding. So I wait a, a lot of years. Back then, I had my lesson plans and I, I was presenting those in, with my students and stuff. And there was a teacher who, uh, who hear about the opportunity to present in Space Center Houston. And she told me, hey, Javier, why don't you present all those lessons that you have in Space Center Houston to show teachers how to do the same thing that you're doing, but with their students? And I talk to myself, how am I going to do that? I'm Mexican. I, I, mm -hmm. I cannot do that. I was thinking to myself, I barely spoke English back then in, 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 um, in that year. Because uh, language, uh, English was not my, my first language. And uh, she managed to convince me. I submitted my lessons and I didn't expect it to be selected because uh, I thought that in order for you to present in Space Center Houston, you gotta be a genius. You gotta mm -hmm. be something very, someone very smart. Uh, I don't know, something out of my league. So I just apply. And then a few months later, they accepted my, my proposal in 2011. You see, all the way from 2004 to 2011, I had a lot of experience doing those same lessons that I, uh, I, I presented those people like them. And year by year, I, I challenged myself to present something new, something exciting. And I am not just helping myself. Last year, we had uh, students and teachers presenting with us in, from, um, from Colombia, from Mexico, from Brazil. And probably, I don't know, one of you might be presenting from Malaysia if you want. Hmm. So don't be afraid to try. Don't be afraid to ask. The worst case scenario is that you can look like a fool, but never underestimate yourself. <laughs> But you never know where you're going to end. That's really, really power powerful. And that's really, really inspiring uh, to me. Uh, teachers, what do you think about uh, 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 Teacher Javier's uh, final message over here to all the teachers over here? I think it's inspiring in two ways, in two uh, fold, not just to teachers themselves, the development themselves, also to the students. So for example, uh, Mr. Javier's story is that he developed himself he developed himself by trying. He developed himself by uh, asking for collaborations and showing his work through videos, showing his work uh, through uh, connections. And then, voila, they, he, uh, he, he opened up the connections to the whole new world, right? Uh, though, uh, that is the development from the teacher's point of view. Then the student's point of view, uh, all these projects that teachers have here, Mr. Javier has created. Uh, for example, the student just asked, can I go to Mars? Although uh, we might not create a pathway straight away, send him to Mars, but those knowledge, those software and those uh, um, projects that, that students are exposed to uh, by uh, teacher Javier is already like uh, planting very, very um, much seeds, not just one little seed, uh, a very, very like a lot of like seeds, a lot of gold nuggets are planting inside these students that might be able to achieve or might be able to realize his dream to go to Mars. Who knows this student is actually another Elon Musk, actually another, uh, uh, you know, uh, space engineer, astronaut, future astronaut that is being inspired by teachers have here or teachers over here, your projects, your initiative. So that's, I think this is uh, 
a very, very inspiring, a very, very um, powerful message and concluding uh, thoughts from Teacher Javier. I think Teacher Javier, um, we have uh, a little bit of time just to let you do a final, final concluding uh, thoughts or concluding messages, any words of encouragement to all the teachers that are still over here and then all the teachers that are about to watch your video later on. What are the words that you want to like give them uh, in, in this final moment? Okay, my final words would be dare to do creative things because teachers, I'm a teacher too. Sometimes we are limited by the curriculum. We are limited by ourselves. We are limited by our resources. We are limited by our background, by our language, by the way we think, by our education. I'm sometimes with... Uh, with our university or, or the school where, where we attended. So um, in life, there's a, a lot of limitations, but a lot of the limitations are just imaginary because there's not something, there is virtual, you know, <laughs> talking about mm -hmm. virtual reality. Sometimes those limitations are virtual, are, are not real. And you're thinking that you're hitting a wall but the actual wall is not there, it's just yourself. So my, my advice for all the teacher is to dare to do creative stuff because you, you never know what you're gonna be doing by exploring, by imagining, by collaborating. Because if you're just working to yourself and you're not sharing what you're doing, you might probably never go to present in Space Center Houston that way. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the uh, final uh, words of encouragement from uh, Javier's side. And I think Javier's is a very, very on point on the uh, daring to try, daring to do creative stuff. And also the limitations that we have, the barriers that we created for ourselves, actually all can be, uh, you know, all can be jumped through, all can be solved, depends on our will, definitely. Just like uh, Mr. Javier just uh, shared in his story, uh, language is one thing and then the the uh, green card is one thing but everything's come into place when you have a will when you have a solutions when you have the desire to really really go and realize it so really really uh, inspiring words and really really uh, inspiring stories from Javier hopefully teachers can have this uh, some take home messages can apply some of it not just the techniques not just the software go and explore also the thoughts of it also the uh also the what it's called the essence or the the motive the intention behind it right do it with the right intention do it with the right will and go for it right yes uh, teacher rini i will yes teacher iman say thank you mr javier there to try there to try yes uh, that is true yes so thank you so much once again uh, to Javier and we uh, are at the very end of the session so uh, teachers feel free to give a little bit of feedback to uh, teach uh, Mr. Javier over here in one of two words in one of two words describe what you do you feel about today's uh, session in one of two words describe what do you feel about today's uh, session to Mr. Javier awesome uh, teacher Iman said and teacher Sassi will surely explore thank you so much Yes, so teachers over here, inspirational. Yes, uh, teacher Abdul, new and refreshing. Great. Yes, thank you so much, teachers, for your feedback. So uh, let's uh, celebrate this moment together uh, to take a very, very uh, good photo with uh, Mr. Heavy over here. So we will take a screenshot with everyone, switch on your video, and I will uh, take a screenshot of it. So teacher, feel free to switch on your video right now. Yes, yes, awesome, awesome. Well, some of uh, the teachers are actually in school. Uh, I thought it's holiday season or uh, or you go and go go back to the school to use their Wi-Fi. Uh -huh, uh, that could be it. Huh? Okay, okay. So teachers, feel free to switch on the video and we will take a very, very awesome pictures together because this is the moment we celebrate the end of the fifth session, the very, very last expert sharing session and it ended with a blast uh, with teachers Javier's uh, concluding thoughts uh, just now, right? Very, very awesome. So let's uh, us take a picture with Javier, with Jay over here and with all other teachers over here. Switch on your video. Uh, so nak nampak muka yang seri, semenyuman yang manis, cikgu-cikgu semua. Yeah, okay, ready ah? Okay, let's uh, take a quick photo with thumbs up, with love, everything. And we'll take two photos. One, two, and three. Second one, and one, two, 
and three. Yes, I'll share all these photos with uh, Javier and with all, all the teachers in the Telegram group itself. And that is the end of the session. Later on, later on, teachers, feel free to stay back to give us some feedback as well. Uh, just the sassy there, with a chit chat session that we have. Just two to three minutes, if let's say you are able to. How about uh, I invite teacher Sassy, teacher Sassy, a uh, long time no chat. Uh, teacher Sassy, can, could, would you be able to stay back? If let's say it's okay, you can type in okay. Uh, how about uh, teacher Rini as well? Boleh stay back sekejap untuk uh, bagi sikit feedback untuk hari ni. Uh, untuk uh, expert sharing session. Boleh lah? Okay, terima kasih teacher Rini. Yes, teacher Sasi, sure. Thank you so much. Uh, how about uh, teacher Welmurukan uh, juga? Boleh stay back sekejap? Can stay back for a while because your video is still on. Uh, that's how I pick actually uh, randomly. Okay, so uh, before we end the session, uh, just a quick announcement, a reminder about our none other than score a creative learning olympic one of the competition that uh, you can apply our competition that you can apply all the techniques that are being taught by jay by all the five experts right and also uh, how do you guide your students in learning more effectively score a creative learning olympic so about green and environment presentation uh so make sure your students are registered because prizes are very, very uh, awesome and exciting. 2,500 cash prize for the champion and also other, among other things like hamper certificate and also the uh, stationaries as well. So don't forget, this is the most important part is today. Is today uh, the uh, afternoon, uh, which is happening for the primary school, 12.30 p.m., which is happening very, very soon. And the secondary school, Skolam Nanga, 3.30 p.m., uh, 3 30 p.m. for the secondary schools is today yeah so what is going to happen is that um the registration is still open uh, teachers feel free to share this telegram group students telegram group to your students to your students uh. Uh, make sure they are in the group itself because all the zoom link all the zoom link for both secondary school and also primary school are in the telegram group for this students group creative learning olympic students group right so just a quick check over here. Are your students already joined in? Are your students already joined in? Can you type in yes if yes? Huh? Uh, can you type in yes if your students already joined in and ready for the briefing session and also the workshop later? Yes, teacher Aziza, very awesome. Right? Yes, this is the uh, uh, announcement for later on the briefing session, hopefully to see your students. Teachers, you can feel free to join as well. Let's say you uh, want to know about the competition rules and format yeah, to guide your students better right ah uh, feel free to join in as well for teacher side uh? Uh, let's say if the zoom is uh is is full you can join in using youtube live link as well uh, i recommend teachers use youtube live uh? then the zoom we can open to the students right okay yes uh very awesome teachers uh this is the final announcement of the creative learning olympic so that is all for today uh, so feel free to uh, stay back to chit chat with me if you want to. Uh, let's say uh, teacher Rini and teacher uh, Sasi as well. Teacher Wamurukan as well, if let's say you can stay back. And that is the end of the session. And this is the fifth session that we have. Oh, uh, one thing before I forgot. I uh, have to give the feedback form, the links uh, for e-certification long uh, form. Uh, I think teachers are waiting for it already. Uh, if let's say you have completed four five sessions okay now i already put in all the links into the zoom chat later on i'll be putting in the telegram as well the first link is the feedback form feel free to type in your feedback for today's session for today's session for all for any of the session that you wish to give us feedback the second link a uh, very important a reflection form and also to get your e-certificate Right, you will reflect on the five sessions and then you will type in your full name and school name as well to get the e certificate for the second form. Then the third one is the uh, Mr. Javier session today. You can rewatch again. Number four is the links that Mr. Javier shared with us. Right, also some of the spatial links and also the uh, NASA links. I think a uh, teacher Javier can one shot send to my WhatsApp later. I will uh, one shot share to the Telegram as well right the spatial links and also the uh, uh, nasa links are the all the links that are applicable to the teachers then the past sessions we have all the links as well and also the final one students telegram group for score a olympic yes ah uh, thank you so much Javier. very very appreciate it thank you sharing for your saturday and holiday with me yes thank you so much uh likewise likewise because your your site is at night so it's very very uh, appreciative of you 
Okay, so uh, that is all. And the uh, reflection form, remember to fee, uh, fill in the feedback form as well, both of the forms. Remember to fill in and encourage the students to join in the Score Olympic Students Telegram group. So that's all for our concluding thought. And our time is already 12. i very, very thankful teachers still join in until now. And the fifth session is ended with a blast. Thank you so much. This is the end of the session. You may proceed to leave the Zoom. Okay, unless you want to stay back as well to, to, to listen to our uh, chit chat session with the teachers, right? Uh, so I will cue uh, maybe teacher Welmo Rukan first. Uh, teacher, is it okay if you share some of your feedback and uh, unmute yourself and then share with me like what do you think about today's program? Yes, teacher Rodzi, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hi, teacher. Uh, which school are you from? Good morning. Uh, morning, morning. I'm from Ajram. Ajram is uh, in which state? Uh? Uh, Selango. Ajram, ah, Selango. Selango, so okay. So I'm teaching there around seven years. So I, uh, I'm teaching uh, mathematics for primary school. Uh, uh, year six. Year four, four and six. And I also involved with the Nature Society. Mm. Uh, so uh, for today's session, I learned about the uh, Tinka card. Actually, it's uh, in Kalima, eh? provided by the, our government. So and I noticed that. So, so it's uh, starting for me to use it for my student, especially for mathematics. I can use it for modeling, eh? 3Ds, and connect with the yeah, nature, uh, nature and environment. And so uh, I can create programs uh, for, for society. So teacher, you would say today's uh, sharing session actually made you uh, think of to start using this. Yes, yeah, something new for my students. So I get ideas and uh, it looks like so advanced for me, but it's okay. So I know uh, to do something for my people, learn something. So I explore the websites and see what I can do. New things from this uh, lesson. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, teacher Wemurukan, uh, because that is what we want to hear actually to really like uh, spark your ideas and then you're going to explore, you're going to apply it in your classroom. But what do you think about the overall expert sharing session? Uh, is, this, this, is this your fifth session already? Yes, uh, my fifth session. Uh, first section, I have, have some uh, other jobs to do. So uh, I only uh, last night, uh, did, that is uh, Mr. Zaid Ali session. I watched uh, late night and about visual learning, uh, visual learning. So I learned a lot of things there, creating a, a scrib a scribbling and thing. So uh, I think it's very useful for me also. So the, from the five sessions, I had a lot of things uh, teaching uh, creative learning, about creating le creative learning. So and I think it's very useful for my students. So uh, the way of teaching after this uh, will change for me. La. So I can make my students more, uh, more fun and learning uh, way of thinking. They can change the way of their thinking. Thank you. Thank you so much for your uh, for your words of encouragement as well. Because um, one thing I noticed about teacher Wemurukan is that already thinking to change. The the daring to change, the willingness to change is a very beautiful thing. Uh, even you know, you, you have already teach for seven years, eight years, you're not going to use back the same teaching method because we need to adapt. The words is to adapt to what uh, students need nowadays, right? So very, very salute to, uh, very, very uh, appreciative and, and respect to teacher Wem Rukan as well. Uh, thinking to change the methods, uh, thinking to adapt to a more creative uh, methods of teaching. So hopefully teachers uh, can be expired, inspired by teacher Wem Rukan as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, teacher Wem Rukan, okay, for you. your feedback. Okay, thank, thank you, you to Mr. Javier Montiel also. This session is very... Very, I think, amazing. I yeah, say amazing and uh, so open my mind to change. Thank you very much.
Yes, well put, teacher. Open my mind is what uh, what I uh, experienced as well when I first uh, know uh, Mr. Javier as well. Right, okay. So uh, thank you, teacher Vamrukan. And next one, we have uh, teacher Rini. How about teacher Rini? Hi, Chegu. Ah, yeah, Chegu, tadi yeah. ada masalah internet ke? Yeah, yeah. I don't know why, ah. but apa mendung hujan <laughs> oh uh, but you able to join like the whole session like a little bit yeah uh, what do you think about it what do you think about today's session uh, today's session uh, uh, quite tough for me because it's about i look at that tinker cat and then the space i uh, using the application uh it's not my it's not my bidang <laughs> Uh, so it's quite tough but inspiring like uh, Chikgu Sassiri said that we can use it to uh, create uh, imaginary animals. Yes, we have that syllabus in, second, uh, in the primary school. So it's quite inspiring. Maybe I will learn about it because in Selangor for STEM, STEM uh, for the STEM uh, pertandingan STEM, we already have the uh, what a uh, bankel okay a bankel for the tinker cat application so quite uh so it's not new lah for us oh there's a bankel about tinker cat already yeah, ah yeah. so um the next thing is that already have a bankel then mr have also share about it the next thing is to apply it yeah. right teacher ah yes. so I, uh, very, more yeah so i think uh, teacher Rini really is uh, uh acknowledge that this is tough for you uh, this is something new to you uh, not familiar uh, bukan bidang kan? not not your territory not your forte but i think uh, it's the willingness to try that uh, really really uh, awesome that is really, really respectable so teacher Rini, really, i think uh it's one of the teachers that's join all the sessions i noticed uh, all the sessions and give me a lot of like uh, awesome feedback Right. Thank you so much, teacher Rini. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, sangat sangat bersyukur lah uh, dapat uh, meng, um, berkenalan dengan teacher Rini juga. Uh, macam mana cikgu rasa uh, the whole journey uh, dari sesi pertama ke sesi uh, terakhir? Uh, what do you feel about the whole expert sharing session? Yeah, the whole session is quite inspiring for me. Uh, especially, I like to use colors and then from the colors, uh, Faber Castell uh, using the sharing session, uh, share the all the five uh, teachers. Uh, I use the uh, banyak guna lukisan, and then my pupils' notes already colorful. <laughs> I use it in my class, and the last session uh, with Mr. Javier is the tough one. <laughs> Uh, yang number uh, the first session and the fourth session until the fourth session we already have it in school so i just apply it and uh, renew <laughs> renew or uh, tambah baik lah uh, to make it uh, interesting for my pupils Okay, got it. So teacher really said uh, the visuals, learning, and then the colors on notes is a very, very useful for your students and you're already applying it. That's very, very good. And also uh, today's session is about technology, about software. So uh, of course, need a little bit of time to, to explore. So thank you so much, uh, teacher Rini, uh, for your sharing and for your feedback. Yes. Hopefully, uh, it really, really helps you in the uh, your classroom as well. Macam cikgu cakap, tambah baik kan? So it means uh, improve or, or more adaptive or more, more ideas for you to expand on it. Terima kasih, terima kasih banyak Cikgu Rini. Harap-harap uh, nantilah uh, boleh, boleh uh, ada murid boleh join Creative Learning Olympic juga uh, nanti. Okay, thank you so much Cikgu Rini. And lastly, we have uh, Cikgu Sasi, uh, also one of the uh, very, very uh, staple fan uh, of this expert sharing session, right? Ah, so finally, want to talk with uh, teacher Sasi. That Hi, morning, Wenping. Hi, morning, morning. A uh, teacher need to Hi. switch on the video so that I can yeah, spotlight you. Yeah, I, I know, but unfortunately, I'm unable to switch on my video at the moment. Can I just give my thoughts over the audio? 
Uh, can also, can also, but it will be okay. great like, if let's say you can start the video so that I can record it uh, for I know, the actually, I'm, in a, the I'm, in a, I'm in a center of another activity, so I've sneaked out a while just to give my opinion. Yeah, so, <laughs> I see, yeah. I see. No worries, <laughs> so, yeah, no worries. So, if I'm on the video, I'll be interrupted, so that's why I have to uh, just keep it down uh, with audio. Uh, uh, understood, all, understood. You, yeah, first of all, thank you so much again to Faber Castle and uh, Mrs. Xavier, uh, your your Oh, session was very, very outstanding. Um, it's very refreshing, like I said, because it's my first time. And um, thank you. Thank you for um, exploring us and exposing us to these amazing technologies that we can use in our classroom. Um, definitely one that I would explore. I am teaching the upper level mathematics, so I will have to uh, think and, uh, and uh, plan ahead on how I can actually uh, penetrate this technology into my classroom lessons. Um, as you know, upper levels, we normally are driven through syllabus, completion of syllabus and things like that. So um, it is a little time constraining in the terms of if I'm going to introduce my students uh, Tinker card and, and things like that, it might be a little time consuming, but I think if I um, start to lay out a plan and uh, put it into practice, maybe next year's batch might really benefit from the session um, it's a bit too late for the current batch because they're already at uh, you know nearing the trial seasons and uh coming up for their spm examinations but um the form four students will definitely benefit from your sharing so thank you uh, mr javier i i truly enjoyed and uh, about the overall sessions when being i think um it is so mind-blowing that you've got so many experts with us and we learned so many kinds of methods of learning, uh, methods of exploring video editing or even taking down notes on how to actually uh, captivate our students um, in our classrooms. Uh, so thank you to all the lineup of experts, all of you, uh, your sharings were amazing. And we are, we are definitely putting it into practice uh, day by day. And uh, hopefully uh, we too become experts one day. And at school, we'll be able to share this knowledge with all our fellow colleagues so that every child in our classroom benefit from it. So thank you once again for that exciting lineup of speakers. I thoroughly enjoyed. Thank you. Thank you so much, Teacher Sashikala, and your powerful message and powerful feedback over there. I think Teacher Sashi is a very great, good example. Just now you mentioned, actually, the like we mentioned just now, the barrier is that, oh, it's time consuming. But, but actually, we created this barrier for ourselves. It's imaginary, like what Mr. Happy has mentioned. But you straight away come up with a solution or we do lesson planning, we do like proper planning with the students and then hopefully next year, the students can benefit from it. So teachers are seeing a really, really awesome example by setting up the uh, solutions, how to overcome the barrier, how to like really apply it in the classroom. Right, and really, really uh, enjoyable to to meet all of you also, uh, and teachers Asi as well to ha uh, to have this kind of interaction with you in the in the session. So really, really glad that you love all the sessions, this lineup of experts that we are bringing to you. Oh, teachers Asi, if let's say you are available, maybe we schedule another time that you are available for to to switch on video or or or. or Right to to schedule another time to 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 make this testimonial video because your testimony is really really powerful for us. Oh, right? definitely, definitely can. Can you just let me know? Uh, I will get myself free. I think this upcoming school holidays, like you asked just now, it's Saturday and teachers are in school. Believe me, <laughs> even on Monday we have activities running for students. Uh, because wow. we always just want to give the best for our students. So uh, anytime after Tuesday, I'll be available. So just let me know and I'll keep myself free for your testimonial session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Teacher Sasi, for your uh, promise and uh, for, for, the, for the words just now. Yes, uh, teachers, not easy. Uh, even holiday, you need to like, stand by in school for the events, for the uh, teachers, for, for the students, especially for their benefits. How do they like, grow? How do they develop through the programs and events that we created? Yes. Okay, so I think that is the end of the our session and it ended is really really ended very very pow powerfully with uh, mr heavier's message with teachers sassy's message with teachers a very mukan fast page as teachers reading's message and all the teachers over here hopefully you enjoy and learn something from these five expert sharing sessions and hopefully in the future we are managed to organize again expert sharing session 2.0 right with uh, lineups of experts that they, they can improve on and, and they can bring in more advanced 
knowledge or more advanced sharing or more detailed examples to the teachers over here. So yes, uh, thank you so much. Uh, every All the teachers that are still here, uh, we're about to end this very, very last uh, expert sharing session. Uh, a little bit like, uh, you know, uh, not, uh, not, 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 not a bit sad to leave, lah. <laughs> a bit sad to leave, right? Right, so yes, looking forward and anchor. Yes, thank you, thank you so much. Just ask you, welcome, welcome. And yes, uh, I'll end this session, uh, in this uh, five seconds. Once again, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Javier, for joining us until now. I think, yes, you can take a rest already at night. Uh, very, very good night to you. Good evening, and then, uh, have a great weekend ahead, fellow teachers. Although I know you are still busy with schoolwork, uh, remember to take rest. Remember to enjoy the work that you do, right? Uh, it's your passion anyway. It's for your students anyway. And then, yes, later on, Creative Learning Olympic. Very, very looking forward to it, to see your students. Maybe one of it, one of them will advance through the next stage and through the finals. Okay, thank you so much. Have a great day as well. Yes, Teacher Sasi. Yes, thank you so much, everyone. And I will end this session right now. See you.